Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your rooted Nexus 6P to the October security update. It was released yesterday so I think uh, today we'll go ahead and do that. So before we start let's just go over a few things. Right now I'm just currently on the September update as you can see here and I'm just rooted with uh, Magisk. So there is one thing we need to go over before we start and that is next month will be our very last security update for the Nexus 6P and 5X. As you can see here on the Google support website, we won't be getting any more security updates after next month. So that's also something to consider when using this phone. However, there are plentiful amounts of custom ROMs out there on the XDA developers forums, and uh, you can bet your butt we'll be taking a look at some of those after November. Now the first thing you want to download is the SDK platform tools, which is just the executables like these exe files or binaries that allow you to connect with your device and issue commands to your phone from your computer. So download the one that is right for your operating system. It's very easy, you just click on it, you click that checkbox and you download the platform tools. I'm going to be saving everything into one folder and you should do the same as well. And if you've already set up the SDK platform tools, you don't need to do it again as long as your version is up to date. So the last time this was updated was two months ago. Uh, sorry, just one month ago. Um, so if you haven't got the September version of the platform tools, you can just download them again and replace your existing tools as well. So once you've got that sorted, next up is the factory image for our 6P. So I'm going to go here on the right hand side and go to Angular for Nexus 6P. Scroll all the way down to the bottom of the, of the list and download the one that is labeled OPM7. I think they forgot to put the version number there, but it doesn't matter it's probably still 8.1. This won't be getting Android Pie officially, however there is a custom ROM out already. Next thing we want to download is the latest version of Magisk. I'm going to go ahead and download the latest beta version which is 17.2, but if you're feeling a bit rock steady, you can also download the stable version at 17.1. So just scroll down a little bit and you can choose which version you want to download over here. Now the fourth thing we want to download is the latest TWRP custom recovery for our 6P. So make sure you have the latest version here, click on one of the download links and then click on the latest version here, so 3.2.3.0 or dash zero. Now I have this downloaded already and the last few downloads are for those who are suffering from the boot loop of death. Now if you don't know what this is, this is just something that happens to I think the small cores or the small cluster of cores on the Snapdragon 810 I think it is. And basically they become bad and then your phone doesn't turn on and it's a uh, it's pretty bad so this boot image here uh, will disable the four cores and it will allow your phone to boot up on half of its processing power if that makes sense so you can download these boot images i have created two this month one that has the encryptable status for your data partition and one that has the encryption removed straight out you may have to format your data partitions to use these if you haven't done it done so before. So you can download one of these images here at my basket build, or if you feel so inclined to, you can actually use Osmosis's workaround injector. This is a flashable zip that you can download uh, and put onto your phone and flash in TWRP. But of course, if you are already you know using four cores only, you will need to download a special version of TWRP uh, for Angular, don't forget. And this one has a four core patch and also supports file-based encryption. Now depending on which way or how you want to do this, I'll leave it up to you. So you can either download those two files, so the TWRP patched one and the workaround injector zip file, or you can download one of the two boot images from my basket build. So in the end, you'll have a folder that kind of looks like this. The main things that you should have are the platform tools, zip file, the Magisk installer, our factory image for this month, and I guess either a boot image that is patched, the flashable zip to patch your boot image, or the patched TWRP. So these two files would go hand in hand together as you wouldn't be booting your phone off the normal TWRP anymore. Now you notice that this is a few versions behind so you may not be able to decrypt your data partition. I have these files here and I'm going to be flashing the boot image. I'm sure you guys know how to flash these images by now. So I'll just let you know when you can flash what, but I'll be using uh, the patched boot image and we'll be able to check if we're patched using CPU-Z on our Android phone a little bit later. So I guess to get started we can I guess minimize our Chrome window and our background's gone weird but that doesn't matter. 
we can open up the platform tools zip file and as you can see we have the platform tools folder inside just extract the entirety of that folder just outside into our Android folder where we have everything downloaded okay once that's extracted you can close the platform tools zip file and we're just going to prepare a few things here so we're going to open up the platform tools folder and inside the address bar over here you just want to click on it and you want to type in CMD or PowerShell if you want and this will open up a command prompt window uh, in the same directory as our platform tools so we don't need to go about changing directories anymore so once you've got the command prompt window open you can just leave it over there and we want to go back one folder back where everything else is and open up the factory image zip file open up this folder inside the factory image and we just want to extract um, the bootloader and radio images outside like that and then we want to open the image zip file inside here so give that a second it has to extract itself and once you've got that extracted so it's a different file inside just extract the boot system and vendor images outside like that now if you are using one of these boot images you don't have to worry about extracting the one within the factory image because we won't be using it anyways but if you're not suffering the boot loop of death then you don't need to I guess have any of these patched boot images and you can extract the boot image just like I'm doing right now so it's going to extract all the images into our Android folder it's starting to look a bit busy but that's fine let's just close all the factory image folders and then we can go back here now you want to copy over the flashable zips that you need for later on when you need to flash them in TWRP so namely you would need Magisk if you want to keep rooting or keep root and the workaround injector if you plan on flashing that as well so I'm going to copy both of them just in case I need them so I'm going to copy them make sure your device is plugged in and also make sure that it's changed to transfer files and then you should be able to see your phone pop up and then what you want to do is just paste the files onto your phone. I'm going to replace the Magisk zip file that I've downloaded earlier so you should have at least these two files if not just the Magisk installer on your internal storage. Now once you've done that we can now go ahead and reboot our phone into the bootloader. This month's TWRP can safely decrypt our data partition anyways so we won't be needing to remove any screen locks or things like that. If you have substratum overlays I would actually recommend that you disable them now before rebooting or before updating and if you have any Magisk modules that may interfere with this I don't think there are any at this point uh, because it's been on Oreo for so long but if you're worried about something like that interfering with the update feel free to disable your Magisk modules as well that's easy just go to modules and then uncheck the ones that you don't want uh, to be enabled so once you've done that all we need to do is reboot our phone back into the bootloader so press and hold the power button and then tap on restart make sure your phone is plugged in at the bottom with the cable and then so tap on restart and when the screen freezes or turns black hold the volume down button so right now and that will get our phone into the bootloader it may take a while so just keep holding the button until we get into that mode okay so once we're in here all we need to do now is to go back to our computer and we're going to type in a few commands to get started so remember this command prompt that we've changed to our platform tools folder we're going to type in fastboot devices and this will return the serial number of our device and you can see it matching uh, down here as well but that's fine where our device is connected now if nothing shows up I do have a driver installation video or just give it a few seconds if this is your first time doing it if your devices or computer is installing your devices drivers just wait a little bit until that process is finished and then you can run the same fastboot devices command once more now once you have uh, detected your serial number we can go ahead and flash the first image which is going to be our updated bootloader image so I'm going to type in fastboot flash bootloader leave a space at the end of bootloader and drag in the bootloader image from the stuff that we extracted earlier so hit enter on that and when it says OK, we're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. So we're going to type in fastboot, oops, reboot dash bootloader. And hit enter. And our phone should turn black and then boot back into the bootloader. Once we see our little Android friend again, we can now go ahead and flash the updated radio image. So we're going to type in fastboot flash radio. Leave a space after radio and drag in the radio image and hit enter. We're going to do the same thing, just wait for the radio image to flash. And once that's done, 
we're also going to reboot back into the bootloader. So we can press the up arrow key on our keyboard to go back to previous commands. And once we're at the right one, we can hit enter and our phone should do the same thing once more. Now here becomes the part where if you need the patched boot image, you're going to flash one of the two boot images here. Uh, but if you're looking to flash the workaround injector, which pretty much does the same thing, you want to flash the normal boot image first because you need the fresh, the new boot image, and then the zip file is going to patch that boot image for you later. But if you don't plan on flashing this zip file that patches the boot image for you, you can flash one of the pre-patched boot images here. So what I'm going to do is flash the pre-patched boot image. Now keep in mind with what I've just said, so substitute the boot image that you need. I'll have more details in the more info, so do have a look there if you are confused. So I'm going to type in fast boot, flash boot, leave a space after the word boot, and I'm going to drag in our encryptable boot image. Once again, I will have more details down below on what each of these files do and which one you should flash. But if you have any other doubts, you can definitely leave a comment down below or message me on Discord. So once you've flashed the boot image, we can now flash the system image. So I'm going to type in fast boot flash system, leave a space after the word system, and then drag in the system image. Now since this file is almost two gigabytes, this will take roughly a minute to do. So just hold on to your horses and wait for this uh, flashing process to finish. And if you do encounter any errors, such as too many links or some kind of unknown error from Fastboot, you can try replugging your device into the USB port. And also you can try rebooting back into the bootloader once more and then trying to flash the system again. So that's if you run into any issues, but if it flashes just fine, then uh, you can continue on with the process. So I'm gonna fast forward this until this finishes. Okay, so our system image has finished flashing, and to top things off, we're going to flash the vendor image. So we're going to do the command like this. I'm going to type in fastboot, flash vendor. Okay, I'm going to move my mouse, but flash vendor. Leave a space after vendor and drag in the vendor image and hit enter. And wait for this to finish. Not quite as big as the system image, so it shouldn't take that long. Okay, so once that's done, we can now flash one of the TWRP variants. So if you're not suffering from the boot loop of death, or maybe you don't even want to have TWRP, then that's fine. But if you want TWRP and you're not boot looping, you can flash the normal one, so this one. But if you are boot looping and you want to flash Magisk and or you want to flash the workaround injector, you can flash the patched boot image. So pretty much you just need the patched boot image or any patched image if you're suffering from the boot loop of death uh, except for the boot image, which I've explained earlier, but right now we're just going to flash the patched boot image because it does work whether or not you're patched or not. So I'm going to type in type fast boot flash recovery, leave a space after the word recovery and drag in your desired recovery image. So this is going to be the patched one, but if you don't need the patched one, of course, you can download and flash the normal TWRP. Once you have done with this, this is pretty much all the things you need to do. We're going to boot ourselves into the recovery now. So we're gonna go back to our device and then use the volume up and down buttons to navigate to recovery mode and then hit the power button to select it. And our phone should boot into TWRP. It may take a little while since this is the four core variant. Things might seem a bit sluggish. So just give this a few minutes and if it asks you to decrypt your data partition, please do that as well. Now my only concern is that this older version of TWRP can't decrypt the data partition, but it looks like it's going to be working. Okay, yep, so we're working here. Now if this screen pops up, you can either choose to keep read only or swipe to allow modifications, but I think since it's only one month left and I don't think we're gonna be doing, well, I'm not gonna be doing any OTA videos, I can just swipe to allow that. And then we're going to tap on install. And this is where you want to locate the zip files that you're looking to flash. So remember how there were two different ones, uh, one for Magisk, which is quite normal. And then you had one for the patching of your boot images. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and we should see these two files. So this file is for those who are suffering the boot loop of death. I'm just going to tap on it. And this is the one that patches your boot image and recovery image 
to work with only four cores. Now this is only if you have flashed the original boot image and you need to patch it, but if you flashed one of my patched boot images, you don't need to flash this zip. Okay, so depending on what, if you need that, you can go ahead and flash that. And then after that, if you don't need to flash the workaround injector, you can just tap on Magisk and flash Magisk to reroute our device. So we're going to wait for Magisk to install, just going to fast forward this. Okay, so flashing has finished. I'm going to tap on Reboot System now since we've done everything we needed in TWRP. If you get a prompt to install TWRP as a system app, I tend to say no, but you can install it if you want to. And right now we're just going to wait for our phone to boot up, albeit a little bit slower since we have used the patched boot image. And then we're going to check a few things and that will conclude our updating video. So I'm going to fast forward this until we make it back into Android. Okie dokie, so our phone's booted up here, just populating its apps and finishing its update. So I guess first thing we can do is just have a look at the new build number, just to triple check that we flashed the right images. I don't think it would turn on if we, if we didn't, but there it is, the OPM7, so that uh, denotes a new milestone or some kind of new build. So you should expect some changes, I guess, maybe some under the hood. So let's have a look at Magisk Manager while we're at it. We can see that we are still rooted, and we can check our safety net status and this should be passing as well yes we are and last but not least let's check out cpu z where we can see four our other four callers stopped there we go so you can see from cpu 4 to 7 they are no longer turning on now i remember someone commented last on my other video oh what happens if um, cpu 4 to 7 is not stopped and um i'll just reiterate you should only see those stopped if you have flashed the patched boot image or you have patched the boot image to only work with four cores because you either have the boot loop of death or you like to, I don't know, save battery or something. But if you haven't done anything to make it four cores only or to use four cores only, then you shouldn't be seeing just your four cores. So if you have all eight CPUs running and that's that should be normal for you as long as you're not running into any issues, right? So just because I've shown here that my phone is using four cores, it doesn't necessarily mean that your phone should be using four cores because my phone doesn't have to use four cores. I'm just demonstrating um, which images to flash and how to do things. So you don't have to mirror exactly my configuration here, of course, because if you're not suffering from the boot loop of death, um, why stop those four cores? You're just, uh, I guess, hindering performance. So with that being said, thanks for watching guys. And I look forward to our last ever update next month and from there we're going to be taking a look at some cool custom ROMs I do have one on the Android Pi already that should be released in a couple of days and of course we can take a look at how we can increase the longevity of our device after Google stops updating it as well so once again thank you so much for watching and if you have any other questions feel free to leave it down below and if you have any other comments that you'd like to leave or maybe a conversation feel free to head over to my discord that is also linked down below as well and as always, happy flashing.